It's your favorite podcast, host of the most, the horror heathen. And this today's episode, I have a very special honored guest for South Jersey Horror, Mr. Lou Temple, who is perhaps best known for his role as Axel on The Walking Dead, uh, the character of Ned Oldham in the action adventure thriller Unstoppable, which I didn't even know that was you, by the way, with the long hair. Uh, yeah, we filmed that out in your world uh, a little bit in the Rust Belt above uh, Pennsylvania. Yes, I, I, that's actually a really good movie. I enjoyed every single second of that movie. It was awesome because you got to play alongside Denzel Washington, Chris Pine, and Rosario Dawson, and she's a, right. they're all wonderful actors. They are, um, yeah. Um, but you're now playing in the – oh, I'm sorry. Directed by Tony Scott, but it, and you are now Cal, the diner manager and a comedy genre waitress. Yeah, and uh, they've made a Broadway musical of that, so I'm, I'm very honored to be part of something that has a song and dance to it now that travels the country in live version on stage. That was uh, that was that was a good experience, I have to say. That was wonderful. That is that does sound fantastic. So you were born and raised in the Bayou Country of Louisiana. You are an extraordinarily diverse actor who is often compared as the chameleon because you have a unique ability to be any character that you want. And that sh that shows talent, and, and I'm very impressed with that. So I, well, see, thank I, see, you. I see a lot of your movies, and I'm like, they are not lying. <laughs> oh, that's kind of you to say. Well, it's good to be here with you, Ben, on the uh, South Jersey Horror Podcast, and I, uh, I'm happy to talk to you today. Here we are uh, in the... Just post Halloween, pre Christmas holiday kind of uh, takeoff point. We're we're ramping up for our big Christmas season, and uh, it's interesting that the horror genre has found its way to slip into Christmas. I noticed with uh, a movie coming out called Violent Night. Is that right? Where Santa's maybe got a penchant for uh, being a badass. Is that uh, I haven't seen this movie, but I see it advertised. So um, yes. maybe horror is all year, not just for Halloween anymore. Well, for some fans, yes. <laughs> I, yes, I would I, assume, and, right? And, and David Harbour is playing Santa Claus, which I think is going to be. He oh, plays, great. Perfect. Yeah, he plays, he always plays badass roles. So. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll do a good job with that. He can. Uh, he can bring Hellboy right into Santa. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the movie Feral, and which I just watched a couple of days ago, which was really oh, cool. good. It was a really Great. good movie. Um, yeah. And it's about a wild animal who attacks six grad students on a weekend hike in the woods. And one by one, they become infected with an unknown virus that turns them into bloodthirsty creatures. So... It doesn't really clarify what kind of creatures that are they zombies like or just the undead or I'm not sure. Well, yeah, interestingly, uh, I think the creature in and of itself is feral, so it becomes it sort of unleashes the wild uh animal within you that is um rather predatory, and so um, maybe. Maybe it should be related more towards werewolfish okay. uh, creature. It's definitely a creature feature, I would say, as the film goes, uh, with a moral dilemma. And uh, I was always interested in the moral dilemma uh, more than any part of it in, in two parts. Um, uh, the dilemma of the idea that that which is one of my favorite things in the walking dead as a theme or any place that you would do anything to protect your child so to speak 
or your relation. Maybe it could be your wife or your husband. But the idea that you would protect them even though they have uh, become something else, uh, particularly uh, you know, with somebody like the governor who is trying to protect his child Penny and hope uh, Penny in hopes that a cure could be found, that they could um, get her back. So he keeps her in a state of, you know, uh, captivity, I suppose, in a, as a walker. And it seems rather perverse, but it, it is a, uh, you, you understand as a parent, the heartfelt point of that. So, uh, in Pharaoh, my character starts there as his son has turned uh, and he's lost most of his family to this wild creature, to this uh, unknown disease. The second moral dilemma, of course, is that um, once contracting this disease, would you want to spread it to anybody else? Um, so we've kind of lived this in the last several years with uh, with the pandemic, with um, uh COVID-19 and trying to take care of the people around us and make sure we don't expose uh, any viruses to them, particularly uh, immune compromised folks or elderly. And so this kind of plays in, in this movie, these, these two part dilemmas, which I find to be really interesting. And so at the end, as a young person, so full of life and future, um, you don't know whether you should venture back to society or maybe just end uh, the disease and your life out in the woods so as not to spread it into, uh, into a pandemic. So um, that was my, uh, I guess, interest in doing the movie for Mark young who wrote it and directed it and uh i really appreciated all the little earmarks we worked really hard on that movie um on a sound stage typically while we're in the cabin <clears throat> here in los angeles but uh, also out on location in the forest as well and a really cool young cast i i enjoyed i was the old man in the sea on this one and um but i liked the work that was done for sure and I bet all those young actors looked up to you too. So maybe I mean they probably were tired of um, hearing me offer ideas about the potential or possibility of what this scene could have in it. So, uh, but hopefully at some point they might have said that didn't uh, that wasn't entirely unpleasant working with Lou Temple. So uh, I've worked with Scout. Uh, a couple of times obviously now um and i always appreciate her work and i think she's she's fantastic she's kind of the lead in this movie if if there is one um so and I, yeah i suppose it would be her and so she was she was great well if i was on set with you if you were giving advice to me i would definitely take it in <laughs> so. oh well that's kind of you to say thanks yeah i try not to make it uh as much about uh me as as the possibility of what we could maybe obtain or achieve uh, on this moment because of the things that we're thinking of or trying to do outside of what's just on the page and what's just on uh, our responsibilities for the line. So um, I do try to offer some insight if that's possible. Well said, well said. I, like I said, I would I would listen to anything you have to say about acting because you you have that reputation that that's why they, they, they dubbed you as the chameleon because you can just do anything. You, you're you so assertive. You can just put yourself in any situation you can develop that character. So circling back on that with your awesome reputation, did you have to audition for the role for Talbot or did they just give it to you? Well, I've been knowing Mark Young for quite some time. Uh, um, he had seen me in the Rob Zombie movies, particularly The Devil's Rejects, and I always liked my work. And so he had invited me. Uh, I actually never had to audition for one of his films, of which I've done three. 
Um, so we have a good shorthand and he kind of writes uh, characters for me, as a matter of fact. And so in this instance, he had a very specific idea and he sends it to me and, and, and I read it and offer some thoughts as to what I think the character is. Then he might adjust a little bit uh, with his writing. We kind of collaborate on that. But uh, um, no, that was kind of built for me uh, from Mark, which uh, which I'm very grateful for. That's the truth. Yeah, I, I think I said three. I've done actually four movies for Mark. Uh, the Killing Jar, Wicked Blood, Feral, and then Limbo. Um, recently so yeah i enjoy working with him and um apparently he likes working with me or uh four times now <laughs> so um we must have a, a symbiotic appreciation for each other definitely it keeps you as retainers i mean it's that's good so so the role of talbot was it challenging for you or for anyone else while filming this movie yeah it was challenging because like i say um the he has a secret that his son is actually the creature i shouldn't be that that's a spoiler and i apologize for that but uh uh you'll get it when you watch it and and just keep that secret uh which obviously lou's not very good at but talbot was much better at uh or they they come across um a hermit in the woods the old cabin in the woods trope that is occupied by a uh, mysterious man woodsman so to speak and then uh, when he uh, discerns that these young one of them has been infected he recognizes what the potential problems could be and he uh, mysteriously tries to, to head off those problems and then that's where kind of the chaos starts to ensue so i guess keeping the secret of knowing i know what's out here in the woods and not revealing it to the rest of the uh, the people in the scenes the cast uh, was was a challenge and also the confined space of the sound stage that we had where we were building it to try to make it uh, feel and look bigger in different sections of the studio um, is always a challenge. But I, I think we did a good job. I think we were able to um, give the space a lot of uh, uh, kind of mystery, especially when we went downstairs and, uh, you know, we're, we're in this basement and it's a little bit of a torture chamber. And yeah, I felt like we did we did pretty well with it. Yeah. And then also I sustained a wound in this movie, not in real life, but as part of the character, which, you know, you kind of have to play that at some point over the course of, uh, of the time in the film. So I'm, I'm ver verily bleeding out the entire movie, which, you know, there's, there's, you know, I physically, I get uh, um, a lot of things happen to me, you know, pushed down the stairs, knocked out tied up uh and then ultimately um i meet my demise so uh but yeah i really liked the character of talbot i really liked uh, how mark had built it and it gave me a really great foundation to, to take some liberties with it and run with it as well Talbot was also stabbed in the back too wasn't he <laughs> he was my gosh i mean come on you know yeah, it's, yeah, don't don't trust anyone with a knife. Uh, well, you've already answered the um the next question because I was asking you if was there any scenes that seemed arduous, but you said being pushed down the stairs and all that stuff. All yeah. of the physicality, and you know, you're trying to maintain a certain. Um, uh, I guess you you're trying to bring an authenticity to it, but it, it's definitely an intensity to it. So. Uh, I've learned like working from Rob with Rob Zombie that that intensity uh, you can't manufacture that you kind of have to get to a place where it's it's palpable it's real and then um, you go from there and see see how it lands on on camera and so I always try to give it everything I've got in that realm and then um, within within the confines of safety you know we 
we, we do a lot of things physically on sets, but we always have to be professional and safe uh, as, as it relates to everything we do, for sure. Well, I believe you know, like, doing a, like doing a podcast, Ben, you know, you, you, there's it's a it's a occasionally that it can be very physically challenging and, um, you know, it can be dangerous. You've got to got to safety first. Right. Yeah. I might get shot by something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope not. Well, I, I believe that your talent is a way above. It's, it's like it's awesome in my in my opinion. Oh, that's kind of you to say. I like, uh, you know, you use the word chameleon or someone has and as it refers to me. And I suppose um, what I'm really trying to do in that realm is is to do a different person every time out and try to do something is vastly different from what I've been seen doing before. So I think that's where that that comes from. I try to challenge myself to do uh a, a different color and a different character each time and occasionally that's in the form of uh physicality just the way i stand or walk or definitely in the way i look whether that be hair or facial hair or, um you, you know uh makeup tests or um occasionally a different voice uh accents uh definitely wardrobe but i always try to build something different than what I've done before. And uh, I do that as a personal challenge. And I think that keeps it really interesting for me. What do they say? Variety is the spice of life. So yeah. I try to keep, I try to keep uh, the films spicy. How's that? <laughs> That's great. I love it. So do you have any roles in your career that have been your favorite so far or is just you like everything? No, there's definitely ones that stand out. It's a good question. Thank you for asking, Ben. Uh, we talked about Ned Oldham right off the onset uh, for the podcast this, this afternoon. And uh, what I love about Ned in the movie Unstoppable is he is an unlike, unlikely hero in the end. And he's somebody that wasn't sure um, that he had a plan. He didn't really have a plan. Um, and there certainly wasn't a absolute um, remedy to this situation, but he knew that he had to help and he kept going and he, he always kept moving forward. That was a big part of it. And the other thing with that role was he was by himself a lot. So uh, as that goes, I had to land that character in the very beginning, like in the diner scene in his mach machismo and his bravado. So that when he's out driving in the truck and we're watching, um, we forget about him a little bit, but he, we remember him well enough in the end when he shows up, Oh, that guy, that, I remember that guy's still out there and he can help and help, you know, be one of the heroes, uh, that saves the day. So, um, I always look at the arcs of the character and how they can help serve the story. And that was an excellent opportunity to do that where Tony Scott, the director, let me uh, run with it off the leash, so to speak, and do some things that may not have been on the page, but are on the script. So I really like him in that realm. Uh, I like Adam Banjo, whom I did for Rob Zombie and the Devil's Rejects. Uh, for very similar reasons, because we we start out seeing him as a you know big talker, and if I ever ran into those guys, and lo and behold, he does. And what's he do? He throws up and has to have his wife take care of him for a minute. And then when push come to shove and the shit hits the fan, he's got to rise up to fight uh, nobly to protect his friend, and he loses. But he kind of goes down in a blaze of glory, where I think the audience is rooting for him and his partner against Otis Driftwood. So I really like um, that character as well. Uh, I, I like the underdog characters, people that you can, uh, you can root for. And then there's Axel, obviously, um, where, uh, shoot, are you still with me? I am. I, oh, uh oh. Uh, we were just talking about okay. we were just talking about Axel, one of my favorite characters that I've had the uh, good fortune to portray on The Walking Dead, and I love 
uh, liked Hal, but he had a secret that he was um, concealing. And and uh, ultimately, that was how he was incarcerated. But um, for the longest time, we, we thought he might be, um, you know, something that he wasn't maybe. Uh, and I, I wanted to at least reserve the right that if we were going to make him uh, a difficult person to be, uh, to deal with, that he was kind of covered up and well done and sort of uh, bound to himself. And then if he peeled out, you'd see a lot of tattoos and kind of a serial killer. We never got to that place, but I wanted to reserve the right of the possibility that we could. And then when he finally does reveal himself that he was, maybe falsely incarcerated, it was an accident, to Carol, um, it's kind of charming. And we, we, we have a heart towards him. And then, of course, um, it's a happy day, but kind of sad because he dies. And then, again, he's left uh, with the blood in Carol's hands, physically, literally, on her, where she um, intuitively uses him for a shield to help save her life in that firestorm from the governor. So I really like the arc of that guy who was just trying to get along, go along to get along, be ingratiated with the uh, with the group, uh, be be trusted, looking for a friend, maybe talk too much. Definitely wore his heart on his sleeve. You must be a lesbian because you got the short hair and just um, <laughs> very kind of says what everybody might think, you know. And I felt like, and also had a little levity to him. So I felt like that was um what the show needed at the time and, and the writers and the producers were um supportive of that and helping build that but but not too much they didn't want too much they never want too much comedy it's a pretty dire situation on the walking dead but um so those are three characters that i've been really really proud of uh and you mentioned cal on waitress uh i, I love that character because he literally says what he is. Um, are you happy? I nobody had ever asked him if he'd been happy. I'm happy enough. I don't get much. I don't. I don't give much. I just generally take whatever comes my way and and accept it. And um, not often you get to have a speech that tells you and the audience what the character's all about. And that was an instance. So I really like that character as well. So those are four characters um that i'm drawn to as as my favorites very cool well thank you for answering that question i really appreciate that so how do you feel about the walk of dead finally ending and it was it ran for a long time 11, 11 seasons i believe um i'm still working with my way through it <laughs> so oh. you, can, you can tell me how you feel about it though because I, I saw pictures of you on social media with um i can't remember her name to play carol um, yeah yeah. So yeah, Melissa McBride, uh, who's fantastic. And I so we talk about character arcs and somebody that's had, in my opinion, the best character arc in this series, um, from going from a from a victim housewife to being the uh, uh, uh the savior of the entire group. Um uh, so she's been amazing. I mean, the show could have been about her. Uh, I think it's about Rick Grimes, the sheriff, but uh, ultimately her her storyline has been incredible and all that she's done and had to go through and, and gone from, uh, you know, kind of mousy to being a, a stone cold killer, you know, and, and uh, that's interesting. My feeling about the series in general is it ran 11 seasons uh, 12 years in production is that I'm honored to have been part of it. Uh, it it's a really great family to be attached to. Uh, I always look forward to the uh, family reunions and the forms of conventions or uh, events that we might, uh, a large group of us get together and connect. Some of them I've never met. It's like uh, extended family or uh, stepbrothers and stepsisters. Uh, so it's always great to be attached and they have these spinoff shows that carry on various storylines that 
um, engage the the audience that they built. Uh, I'm impressed. The Walking Dead's been able to kind of build a young audience, like a Stranger Things, by by having young players come in and do great work. Um, I think the show found it's um, the right time, I guess. You know, I think the show always understood that it was the audience that would dictate uh, how the show went. And, and the show, when I say that, I mean the producers, the, the writers, the directors, the cast always knew what the audience needed. And sometimes the audience didn't know what they needed, but the show somehow picked up on that. I thought the show did a good job of presenting what, what the audience needed for 11 seasons. So um, I feel like it was time to be done uh, and that, uh, that, that, that they did a great job, that there was a continual evolution of the show. It got bigger in storyline. The first three seasons, remember, it was, it was very small very insular group. And then, uh, then they start branching out into these communities. So their storyline started to grow from not just, you know, our five or six survivors to storylines within these communities, which were huge. And, and um, I think that was a huge task on production as far as the writers were concerned and trying to tell all these stories outside of just the Rick Grimes story. So I think it was, I, I think it was handled really well and, and it was done uh, pretty great. Uh, and the audience participation is amazing. The fact that on season 11, they were as strong as season three in audience, you know, over 10 million. And at some point they had 19 million people watching the show at like season six on a given Sunday. That's huge. That's NFL. You know, that that's World Cup. I mean, my gosh. So I think that show is unprecedented in its uh, in what it did for audience participation. And I think shows, uh, almost all shows will be happy to follow in that same, you know, form or semblance of what the, the Walking Dead was able to do. So it's a credit to the production and and the faith in the material, which is crazy. We're gonna do a show about zombies. We call them walkers. Yep. I can remember having seen that comic book or graphic novel on my desk and thinking, this is really violent. There's no way they'll do a TV show about this. 11 seasons later, I, I stand corrected. So uh, I'm very proud to be a part of it. Season three was, uh, in my opinion, one of the best seasons, but um, I'm biased. So, but happy to be part of it. Awesome. So, I have two more things. Um, as yeah. a token, as, as a token of my appreciation, I would love to give you a South Jersey Horror Podcast T-shirt. Oh, cool. So um, later I'll, on, I wear that working out. I wear that. <laughs> I wear that at the gym, man. I'm always so, about. So later on, like, give me give me the address and what size shirt you wear. So I okay. can get the order in. I'll do it. And secondly, my sister-in-law is a huge Walking Dead fan. Her name is Kristen Dutill. Oh, and I hey, Kristen. She just, she just like a quick message real quick. So I told her I was going to try my best to get her <laughs> to say hi. You can say hi to her. So Hey, Kristen. This is Lou Temple Axel from The Walking Dead. Thank you so much for all your years of support and participation. We, we think of you not as fans, but as the audience, that's the fourth wall membership of the show, of which I'm part of. You know, when you leave the show, you become an audience member. And uh, I, just like you, am, um, am part of that audience. So we're really happy that you've been engaged uh, for so long. Hopefully you'll follow a few of these uh, little bunny trails off to the side, whether it be Fear the Walking Dead or, or, or a couple of these new ones that are coming out with... Uh, with Megan and, and Maggie and Negan, Megan, ha, or, uh, or, or Norman's got a show coming out or, or whatever show that is that you'll maintain it. And maybe every now and then drop back into season three and give some love to the prisoners. So happy holidays, Kristen. Thanks for being uh, an audience member for sure. Follow me. I'm sure she will. Thank you so much for your time. Oh yeah. It's a pleasure and big honor. Um, 
I'm so glad you, you agreed to doing this. So thank you so much. And I wish you nothing but the best in your career. And I would definitely keep tracking you on INDBs to see what you're up to. So, all right, ladies Dan, and gentlemen, well, Lou Temple, everybody. Woo! Uh, thanks so much for having me <laughs> on the South Jersey uh, Horror Podcast. And uh, everybody, make sure you drop in and keep tabs of what Ben's doing. He's doing good work, and he, he uh, he's enthusiastic to give you the best uh, updates on all things horror in in the world, not just South Jersey. But uh, uh, keep tabs of that and um, enjoy it. Are are you about reviewing all all good pieces of material, all good work? Yes, everything. There's not enough time in the day to see it all, is there? <laughs> No, <laughs> I wish uh, it was. <laughs> the, so I'll promote. Let's see. I'll do two things. Uh, this is going to be a little, uh, not a digression, but a. a, a uh, we've been watching Wednesday, uh, which is the Tim Burton Adams family. It's pretty good, and you will remember that um, Christina Ricci played yes. Wednesday in the movie. Uh, there's a film I have out with her called Monstrous, which is kind of a psychological thriller. Uh, and it has a creature feature to it, uh, but more a little M, M. Night Shyamalan uh, uh, reveal. So check out Monstrous with uh, Christina Ricci. And, uh, and I'm in that as well. And just trying to think of uh, another horror project that you could drop into um uh, jake Busey and i have a movie we play brothers called pig killer which is about willie picked in the the famed uh serial killer in canada uh where he would feed his victims to his pigs on the pig farm and then sell it to uh the public as as processed meat uh so that's kind of interesting the pig killer out there. Uh, so those are the two I'll leave you with, all things horror for South Jersey. Thanks, Ben, for having me. No, thank you. This is an absolute pleasure and an honor. And take care and hope you doesn't nothing but the best in your career. Because you Thanks are so much. You, you are the chameleon. <laughs> Appreciate you. Appreciate. You. Thanks, Ben. All right. All right. Take care. All right. <laughs>